across another area of dog behaviour that we encounter, perhaps not as frequently as the aggressive cases and the cases of separation issues, is that group of conditions that come under the title of phobia. And there are dogs that present phobias to sounds, to experiences, you name it. What's your experiences of treating dogs with phobias? As you rightly say, David, phobias are not as common as some behavioural issues, but again, something that I see fairly often. And there seems to be no real pattern to what can trigger a phobia. As you rightly say, David, phobias are, is something that we have to deal with on a fairly regular basis. And they can be caused by a whole array of various stimuli, really. So it can be things such as hot air balloons, cooker timers, wine bottle corks popping, a whole array of, of things that perhaps we don't envisage. Um, one of the most common areas that I see in the city is dogs that are bred in the countryside and are maybe kept with the breeder until they're about six months of age. Then the breeder decides they're no good for the show ring and that they're going to sell them to a pet home. And then they sell them to a pet home in the city and dogs then can be very phobic of traffic, so the buses and the noises that are all around. And I see that fairly often. I saw a little border terrier uh, a few months back with exactly that problem, that the dog had been exercising in the local park. The female owner had had the dog for probably three weeks and it ran out of the park across several busy roads back to the house. So that was a real safety issue. So I went to see the dog and typically the dog was very f fearful of loud traffic sounds, so buses, um, lorries and things like that. Also sirens, ambulance sirens, um, but equally was mildly fearful of just normal vehicle traffic. So we had to start a very difficult programme of desensitisation because you lived in the middle of a big city and all around you, all of the time, is this stimulus that makes the dog fearful. So that was a particularly difficult case to start making the dog less fearful and less reactive of all of the things that it was fearful of in that environment. And that really started by putting the owner a little bit more in charge. So the owner gave the dog a little bit more direction, made the dog feel a bit more safer and a bit more confident in her ability to, to keep the dog safe. And also delivering lots of rewards outside of the house, because inside the house the dog was fine. So we started moving lots of things like food, toys, affection, all of that from the house to the outside world to make the dog's walks more rewarding as he became accustomed to the sights and sounds of the city. That's interesting, Ross, because you touched on two aspects there that are significant when we're dealing with behavioural issues with dogs. One is a dog that's run on by a breeder or by another person and has started to form attachments with that person. So, from that transfer to a new owner in a completely different environment that the dog's not been socialised to, you've got the issue of a raised alertness. So in that situation where you've got very heavy traffic, you've got sirens going off all the time, not a, it's not a surprise that a dog would have a phobic response to that. And this motivating the dog, changing the association, I found is a very significant aspect of treating that behaviour. And in that situation, I think you've got an extreme that in the end, the success of helping the dog deal with this traffic, which is going to be around it all the time while the owner has got the dog, I think the success of that is quite significant. So well done.